What does that mean? Elaborate. It's the study of clients. I've said in the past, paintings are doorways into collectors' homes. And, and why would I want to go into a collector's home? To seek out blank spots on the wall. I had a discussion with the dragonfly, which made me link uh -huh. up with the computer spiritually. Okay. That's very nice. Yeah. Yeah, hummingbirds and dragonflies. Yeah. So are you going to buy one of these paintings? Uh, maybe one way we talk in New York. I still want where you're wrong. These days, art is a very lucrative field in which $100,000 can chase after a painting covered with broken plates. For somewhat less, you can purchase plywood under glass. But to get in on that kind of action, Gustavi says you've got to have hype. Explain hype to me. Um, hype is, uh, I guess, a fictitious uh, validation of uh, a half-assed work. Um, most artists have a lot of hype. I have a lot of paintings. Did you paint this? I didn't touch the brush or the paint or the canvas, but I painted it. Could you, how do you explain that? Well, I have a large staff which executes my paintings, and uh, they, they do the actual um, applying of the paint, but I'm the author and the painter of the work. The strategy is to succeed in art without really painting. It's a little known but long-standing practice for most famous artists to have assistants who actually execute their ideas. Gustavi's taken that one step further. They're not even his ideas. Was this your idea, this particular painting? No, this was, this, this is an idea that I paid for. Most artists steal their ideas, I pay for mine. Um, so it's not really your idea and uh, you really didn't actually draw it or put the paint on the canvas. But, but I'm the author. People would ask, what exactly do you do? Well, um, I, uh, I kind of hang around and, and make things, make sure things are moving smoothly. The ideas for Kostabi's paintings are thought up by Diana Gentleman, a former model from Jeffersonville, Indiana, with no formal art training. He said I was, my style was more developed than most of the contemporary artists who were already showing their works in galleries now. I was unjaded and he, that appealed to him because it was a completely fresh new style. She got the job through an ad in the newspaper. She does the original sketches, they're projected onto a canvas, an assistant applies the paint. Gustavi calls it painting by the numbers. Gentleman gets paid eight fifty an hour. Art. I'm into the business of art, and he's into the art of business. So it's this. This pure product. This is a painting depicting an artist being strangled to death by the public, by the demanding public, forcing the artist to produce. When you say pure product, what do you mean? Well, it's just sheer quality. Someone will buy this instantly as soon as it's done. For how much? $14,000. How do you know? Well, it speaks. This painting speaks. This is clearly worth $14,000. In a year, it'll be worth $28,000. Then the poster royalties might be about another $10,000. And then it might end up getting on a glass, or it might, I might license it all over the world on various products, like sheets, blankets, and pillowcases. And, and the, the person who thought up the idea will get about a dollar for it. A dollar? Yeah, because ideas are a dime a dozen, and I get ideas all the time like this. Each idea I get, I manage to uh, get out in the world in such a way that it, it, it multiplies. If all this sounds hopelessly crass, a parody of the most cynical aspects of American success, well, then you got it. That's the whole point. The honest truth is, I painted these lines here, but that doesn't, that's not the part that makes it Kastami. What makes it Kastami? The signature. Besides the signature. Um, well, the, um, the hype that surrounds it when it's in the museum. In a way, his real art is his life, um, and this sort of strange, um, kind of, uh, gig that he's managed to create. The way in which he's managed to, um, sort of position himself as the ultimate sort of art whore on the scene. Art whore? Yes. Eleanor Hartney is a critic who started writing about Mark Gustavi while he was still painting. She gets it, and she's already had enough. Why do you think his persona has caught on? Why has he been so successful? He is simply saying that the values, the only values that really matter are the values of fame and money. <laughs> and I think that when people buy his work, perhaps it's a way of saying that, that they are above that and can laugh at and therefore they are not that. So that there's some sort of strange game that goes on. How do you feel knowing that I didn't paint it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. 
Yeah, I didn't even think it up. <laughs> we like. <laughs> you probably that was a, that Don't guy, you feel betrayed? The guy who took us up yeah. to your loft. There's uh, no presence of the master's hand. None. Yeah. What Kostabi figured out was that the system, any system, requires a certain amount of novelty to keep it going. The fashionable, the transient, the engaging. And he got it into the showroom. What are collectors looking for? They're looking for great colors, great design, red cells. Everyone knows red cells. Well, these paintings are, are so exciting and the colors are so vibrant and the, and the issues that Mark was dealing with early on are really super resolved. I'm selling these things faster now than ever. Right. Four years ago, Chicago art dealer Peter Miller was selling Kastabis for $2,000 a piece. Today, they're fetching 10 times that amount. Who, who cares who did it? Is it a great painting? That's all. You want to live with it. Do you like it? So all this other stuff is very refreshing because it forces people to examine their motives for purchasing art. And that's refreshing. Are you buying a commodity? You trying to pick an investment? I mean, Mark said in conversation when uh, we kind of went over this a little bit, you know, people who buy my work are going to get what they deserve. I just love the painting. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't even put it into words. It's, it's like an emotion, you know. Why do you love your wife? I, I, it's, it's too deep. John Fernandez is one of those people who bought Gustavi's work, and he could care less about the means of production. In fact, it's exactly the way his sign company operates in Hoboken, New Jersey. Fernandez designs the work, the production line cranks it out, he approves the finished product. So enamored has Fernandez become with Kastabi's work that he's bought six paintings in the last 18 months. He spotted this one on the cover of a year-end report for a brokerage house. Lee morning. Smith Morning. I think it really makes... What's it called? It's called Merger. Why Sorry. do you like it? It's me. I don't know. It's just deal-making. It's just business. It's... It's, it's just... I, I, it just, it's just great. You get a certain amount of satisfaction for your $7,000? Oh, I think I've gotten my money back many times. In what way? I feel good that I possess it and that other people can look at it like I can look at it, but it's mine, okay? The image is mine. It's not even Kastabi's anymore. It's now, now it's mine. I can do with it what I want. I can leave it there, put it there, put it anywhere, and all other people can do is look at it and, and appreciate it, maybe. There's always a thing, there's an easy art and a difficult art, and he's an easy artist. I mean, once you get the hang of it, you've got it. Donald Cuspid is a critic for Art Forum and Art in America, two Bibles of American art criticism. It is a kind of manipulation. It's a manipulation of himself as well as the public. And part of the manipulation is to say, look, I'm manipulating. A lot of people would say, you're an artist, all right, you're a con artist. That's right. I agree with them. But I happen to be, and since modern art is a con, and I'm a con artist, uh, let's see who's the best con artist. Clearly the winner has, is, is being looked at. Do you think that Kastabi sitting out in California and says, God, I see all these people making in the art world. I know how to do it. I've got a plan. I'll just go in and do the same thing that everyone else has done. Is it all premeditated? Well, I think at a certain point it probably did become so. It may not have been initially, but um, I think that sort of it, as he sort of began to experience how the art world worked, he began to realize that it was something that he could play with. I am the mouthpiece of my generation. This is the way everyone wants to work. Artists that are in art school right now, they don't want to be the isolated, lone visionary laboring in iso isolation in their small studios without a Rolodex. They don't want that. They know that Picasso had a telephone. People call you the next superstar hype artist. Did you consider that a compliment? Yeah, I think, I think that um, as long as people are talking about you, that's good. Even if, even if they say good things about you. Even if they say good things about yeah. you? What if they say bad things about you? Well, that, obviously, that's the best. Why? Um, because it um, makes for a more exciting story. This is the secret of publicity. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad as long as they get your name right. Kastabi has already licensed the faceless mannequins that populate his art with the Japanese. 
to sell both newspapers and water filters. And he's even managed to get himself into a television commercial for American blue jeans. An ad for Swedish vodka is in the works. There has been one setback. Diana Gentleman has quit her 8.50 an hour job as Kostabi's idea person. She's set off on her own with the company Secrets. She's good. Yeah. She hasn't figured out all the, the you know, the, the little secret ways of, of breaking into the, the, the art world yet, but she's doing it. But otherwise, the scheme is right on schedule. People Magazine is about to officially sanction his celebrity with the obligatory feature. And one of his paintings is now hanging in New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art. Whether you like it or not, you're going to be seeing a whole lot more of Mark Kostabi in the weeks and months ahead. But if the system Kostabi exploits so efficiently works the way it's supposed to, there is an antidote. If people stop buying, that would do him in. Since he's a creature of the capitalist society, the capitalist media, if his ratings go down, uh, he's finished. He's not an incurable virus because um, people basically are going to get bored with him. I mean, I, I think that in a few years, it'll be like, Mark who?